Welcome to Books with Noah, a podcast where I talk with my friends about their favorite books. Today I'm here with my friend Svi, and we're going to be talking about Brandon Sanderson's book, The Way of Kings, which is actually book one of a proposed 10 book series. Um, he has just released the fourth book of the series this year, and the first book, The Way of Kings, was released in 2010. So welcome, Svi. Thank you very much for having me. So glad you're here. So I guess let's just back up with Brandon Sanderson. Um, I had first heard of him because he finished Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series. Um, is that how you were familiar with him? I don't think so. I ran. I I came. I I never read Wheel of Time. My father actually read Wheel of Time and loved it, but was was heartbroken um, when uh, when Jordan passed away before finishing it. Um, I never read Wheel of Time. I was a few years back. I was. Um, looking, searching as I sometimes do, I probably found him through a Google search for like, uh, uh, which fantasy book should I read now, which is a search I run every few years. And, <laughs> uh, and I uh, probably found someone with effusive praise for The Way of Kings, which I actually started once and didn't even make it through the first chapter for whatever reason, which happens to me sometimes. But then the second time when I came back to it and I was like, why don't I sit down and try this again? I became a totally... Uh, obsessed which is what happens when i read uh, good fantasy books and uh yeah the rest is history yeah it's uh i agree and i'm not a huge fantasy person but i really really enjoyed the way of kings um and i know you just finished the fourth book and i feel like at least a lot of people would consider the first book to be a world building book but i think it's much more than that um do you like to talk about your favorite things in that book and uh, why, why it's so good. Right. Sure. Well, in a way, the first book of any 10 book uh, epic fantasy series is going to have to be a world building book. Um, but the truth is that um, Sanderson just gets a lot of the, I feel like, like there's two levels, right? When you have the fantasy novel, you have the, basic things that have to be accomplished, which is like a checklist, right? And then once those things are accomplished, once you reach that basic level, then you have like the what's layered on top of that, which is where, so to speak, the art can take place and the real um, the real like work and fine work of the fantasy novelist. So the thing that strikes you about Sanderson immediately is how consistent he is with the basics. I mean, it, and what I mean by that is that that the world building versus character sort of balance in his book is extremely well balanced. It never feels forced the way that he, he you never feel that he's like just forcing uh, data on you constantly. It's mm -hmm. all tied to and told through the story, which is, which is absolutely essential for a great, for a great um, fantasy novel. And um, even though there is a lot of world building in the first book, you get these also like, it's balanced by these incredible like uh, uh, um, uh, character sketches and also um, like the vignettes. He uses these beautiful interludes when where where he's doing explicit world building because the interludes are not explicitly connected to the plot at all. But and mm -hmm. the process of having those interludes and those vignettes, all of them are sort of a complete little character short story so on the basics Sanderson is very clever he he it's not a overwhelming world building world building process and really the truth is and what I really respect about Sanderson is that in the end it's all about the um, characters and the plot and he's he's totally um, uh, devoted to that and he doesn't let anything uh, uh, get get in his way which is pretty uh, um, impressive so that's the basics I mean that's that's you know what you have to do to be talked uh, talked about in the same breath as a as a uh, uh, you know a Jordan or a George R R Martin right even a Tolkien although although I'm one of the people who I I wouldn't even put Tolkien in the same Tolkien's like a whole other thing Tolkien like transcends okay. the whole genre but but <laughs> but but really that's what that's what it takes and then once you get past those basics and like. And like um, you get past that that basic foundation 
where Sanderson is so where he's the machine that he is and he builds he 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 just pours out these novels and it's also organized and he has like a 30 year plan which is not an exaggeration by the way he has this whole I, yeah. I think I read I think I read Sanderson say in an interview that he has all his novels planned out till he's 70 or something so it's not even a joke <laughs> he's 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 ridiculously organized and like it's all planned out in advance he so knows impressive in his huge world building, which is a huge feat in its own right. Like even if it wasn't a novel, right? This is all like Sanderson could design like a, like a, a role playing game, right? Or a D and D environment. And you could have all of that, mm -hmm. right? That could all be part of that, like a very rich, just pure world building. But then the amazing thing, and really what to me makes the way of Kings, the, the, a, an incredible book as the, as the first, entrance into what is undeniably Sanderson's main series. Sanderson writes a lot of other books and it, and most of his books are connected and take place in the same universe which maybe we could talk about later, but this mm -hmm. the Stormlight Archive, The Way of Kings is the first book in what is undoubtedly, I think even in his own words maybe, his primary um 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 series. And he the, the Sanderson has this incredible ability to make his world building, to blur the line between his world building and his characters. And I think for me, that's what's the incredible calling card of The Way of Kings. You know, you have a lot of book about magic. You have a lot of books with swords and sorcery and, and uh, fairies and demons and, uh, and ancient uh, civilizations and all of these different elements. But the incredible thing about Sanderson and what you'll really get out of The Way of Kings and then the subsequent books in the series as he continues to build and build and build is that he has discovered the essence of the fantasy novel. To me, that's, that's what's so exciting about Sanderson. Sanderson has figured out that, that a fantasy novel is not a self-justifying endeavor. You know, why should I read this fantasy? Why should I read something with swords and sorcery instead of, you know, Anna Karenina, right? Why should I, or, 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 you know, literature. exactly, or, or, uh, or on the other end of the spectrum, you know, uh, um, a practical book of anthropology or sociology like you have on the, uh, you know, a Malcolm Gladwell book. Why should I read this instead of Malcolm Gladwell, right? Right. And more than anyone else in the business, I really do believe this, I've read of quite a number of fantasy novels, Sanderson understands the answer to that question. What is a fantasy novel, right? A fantasy novel basically lets you understand the world in a new way, in a different way than any other book, mostly through what um, people on the outside would call uh, pure nerdery, Right, which which has to do with you know, um, uh, uh, magic systems and different uh, powers and entities in in the in the world that he builds. Right, um, anything in fantasy books they're always numbered. Right, so you have the you know in George R. R. Martin you have a certain number of great houses and they all have different names. Right, or in 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 uh, in um, in what's another example. In uh, you know, in Tolkien, you have the 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 five wizards and the seven rings and the nine rings, right? So you have all. That's when that's when like normal people. That's when the normies' uh, 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 eyes start to flash, right? Is with these numbered like what's this numbered list right. of like powers and entities? And Sanderson takes that to like the umpteenth level. Like there's numbers within numbers, and it's all connected. And an incredibly complex system. Right. Which is to right. me, to me, that's I've spent a lot of time thinking about what's the calling card of the fantasy novel. Like, why is fantasy so satisfying? And I realized fantasy is satisfying because it gives this whole structure through which to understand the world, like with with its own internal logic. Right. Like, uh, you know, I give a stupid example, but like in 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 Pokemon. Right. Which is a, a lot of uh, kids introduction to fantasy in, in some way or another. You know, in Pokemon, the water Pokemon defeats the fire Pokemon, right? So Sanderson is basically like that. Like, it's a game of rock, paper, scissors, except like a million times more complex in the, in the system, right? And you, ha you can nerd out and totally dive into all of this 
interplaying stuff. But Sanderson has figured out that if you just have that, it's not a fantasy novel. That's just a, a, a system or pure world building, right? If that can be somehow justified by the human characters in this world, that those characters and those systems basically merge to become one, that's the essence of the fantasy novel. And really, that's what you get in The Way of Kings. You have a, a, a high fantasy story about, about all different sorts of people, kings and slaves and outcasts and orphans, all in this very rich world. But ultimately, what you come to find out is that everything is personal. All of the, all of the magic and all of the, the high epic things, it all comes back to what's taking place within the, the, the human heart and the human soul. And in that way, it's really uh, uh, profound and beautiful, and uh, everyone should read it. That is incredibly well said. Um, yeah, to kind of reiterate, as somebody who isn't as well steeped in the fantasy genre, I felt like I wasn't sitting here watching this system be put together, but rather I'm you know, on board with very strong, identifiable characters. And the story itself is very interesting. And before you know it, you, you're totally in this world that's very different from, from our life, right? And I think that that's, like you said, very powerful, especially for maybe others who aren't fantasy nerds, right? Who, who want to enjoy a really good story. I think it's an easy way to, to get in there. Um, and yeah, like you said, the, the way that the, the internal struggles of the characters are completely tied into how they grow and how they access their superpowers isn't the right word, but you know, uh, for lack of a better word, yeah. and as they grow through the, as you understand the world, you know, it's, it's also closely related and it's, yeah, it, I think it's masterfully done. So yeah, I guess he's on book four, although I technically there's five, right? You have book two and a half. Um, and there's actually another one, so technically there's six. There's two half books. There's three and a half as well. Yeah, and two novellas, novelle. Yeah, yeah, and and so it's going to be a long, a long journey to wait. But and I guess to give readers an idea or listeners an idea, it's the audible version that I listened to is forty five hours long, uh, which is the same duration as Solzhenitsyn's Gulag Archipelago, all three right. volumes. Right. So. <laughs> But much happier, much happier listening. It is. I mean, you get some of the same slave. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Good point. <laughs> inter- <That's funny. laughs> but um, yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend it. So uh, do you have any other things you'd like to add? I, I would just like to say that, that a lot of people, a lot of people listening to this are probably familiar with George R. R. Martin just because it became, just because Song of Ice and Fire or Game of Thrones as it came to be known just became this, uh, you know, um, omnipresent cultural phenomenon. So, so a lot of people are familiar with that in one way or another. Um, so I would just like to say that Stormlight Archive is like that. To me, it takes the best aspects of, of, of what Martin is uh, is doing in terms of um, epic world building, uh, different characters' perspectives, etc. But instead of being focused on uh, political intrigue and murder, which is really the core of George R. R. Martin's interest, um, you can get something that's much more... Um, uh, sounds kind of corny, I guess, but something much more uplifting and triumphant and less cynical um, when uh, when reading Sanderson, in other words, Sanderson is not out to try and prove that the world is an awful place, or that the world could be an awful place, or that the deepest logic of the world is uh, is cynicism and death. Um, he is actually out to prove uh, quite the opposite. He's out to prove that even in the worst place and even in the uh, the the deepest depths, there's uh, the deepest depths. There are. Uh, um, Things that are really, uh, you know, things that are that are redemptive and um, uplifting and inspiring, and um, you know, it just leaves me personally with a sense much more, more of a 
childlike sense of wonder, you know, about the, 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 the world being a magical place, whatever, uh, whatever that may mean. Um, but the incredible thing is that it does it in a way that's not childlike at all, that's very adult and nuanced and complex. And in fact, as the books go on, as you go to book two and book three and book four, it only becomes more and more um, nuanced, complex, and, and, um, and adult. And, and I really think that that's, that's Sanderson's uh, core competency. That's what he, that's what he uh, does better than anyone else um, is these uh, very very human stories um, and it doesn't feel like uh, something in a different although it's very very different from our universe it doesn't feel like a different universe at all I feel the the it feels very relatable and in a way very personal so I just I just love them I think they're fantastic I'm right there with you I enjoyed this much more than the Game of Thrones books so um, awesome well thank you so much for being here Svi it's my pleasure thank you for having me thanks for listening to books with noah please visit our website bookswithnoah.com you can also find us on youtube by searching books with noah